RDFN. Sure, I'll look at that one. Redfin Corporation. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so Redfin, I actually like them as a data provider, but right now they're they're in the wrong market, my dude. Um, so this is uh, this company is is hurting bad because the overall housing market is way overbought and everything is in downtrend right now like the whole housing market i'm so bearish on the housing market right now i can't even begin to tell you um this is a bottom for it though so like with redfin hitting this low point near its covid crash areas i actually might be tempted to go long on this um but i don't know enough about their financial situation so that would be something to look at they actually posted a pretty significant loss in their net income just in the last uh, in the last year. Uh, the past quarter was really bad. A net income of negative 90 million, which is pr that's pretty bad. Yeah, Redfin is posting some pretty bad some pretty bad numbers. I would honestly I would honestly stay out of it and wait for a sign of strength. It's consolidating now, but you don't know how long it will wait there. So here is how I would do this. You see the COVID crash is where it's currently at, and it's breaking. It, it's, it's threatening to break down. You have this uh, bear flag here. You see, this, you see the market move down like in this perfect channel the way that it has, and then suddenly it starts going sideways. This is a bear flag. So if this thing continues, you might see it going down to like, I don't know, it could be going down to $5. This may not be the bottom for this thing. So rather than waiting, uh, or rather than jumping in on this right away uh, or going short on it, set yourself with some alerts and wait to see if it breaks this, uh, if it breaks this pattern. So you've got two things to watch for. One, you have... You have resistance here at 1150, so that's a pretty significant area of resistance. Ah, sorry, got bumped off my chart. So, if you get this, if you get this structure to break in one direction or the other, set alerts on both of these price levels. Um, I would actually set this a little bit further out, give yourself some distance because you don't want to get caught in a fake out breakout. That's 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 how you that's how you lose money getting caught up by a uh, by a big market maker or a broker that's just trying to mess with you. I'm really digging this halt alert thing you've got set up here. This is great. Thanks. Uh, big thanks to Flabbergank for setting that up. Flab, you dumb man. So like I said, I'm slightly biased because I'm very bearish on the, uh, on the housing market, but I do see that Redfin is also uh, very oversold. It's just anything to do with housing right now is not in a good spot. I'm I'm basically shorting everything that has anything to do with the housing market, whether it's commercial REITs, residential REITs, if it's lumber companies, or if it's um, um, or if it's building contractors like think Lennar or um, or uh, D H uh, uh, D H Horton, any of those companies that are basically their entire income relies on rapid sale of homes at higher prices, that's coming to an end. The housing market is way overbought. Houses are no longer in demand. And I'm expecting housing permits for construction to just basically disappear. And I'm expecting a massive inventory dump because of all of these realtors trying to get the fuck out of their houses and empty their portfolio of real estate because this is the last high for the housing market as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know if it's coincidental, but uh, around here, around you know my neighborhood where I'm at, I'm starting to see more houses for rent and more houses for sale. 
and I, I know it's not coincidental because I've been here for you know 15 years, so I see everything around here, and yeah, I just don't see that it's not normal at all. Yeah, it's a, storm. it's a perfect storm of a couple of things. You've got uh, supply chain issues starting to relax a little bit, labor starting to relax a little bit, and a ton of homes that were halfway built three quarters of the way built and had to be put on pause because they couldn't get the materials to finish couldn't get the labor to finish so now all of a sudden you're starting to see an influx of these paused projects go to completion you have um, uh, interest rates going up so there's a scramble for certain people to get into houses as well as certain people to get out of theirs because of course a lot of people in order to get the house they want they they might already have one to move out of and then you've got mortgage moratoriums being lifted you've got rent moratoriums being lifted it's all these things happening at once and it's creating a supply it, it inevitably in a lot of areas is going to create a supply glut um, and you're going to have homes available with uh, people unable to get the loans because interest rates are going up and uh, everything is squeezed yep absolutely absolutely yeah. The, s simply, I mean, the the pipeline for new people looking to buy houses now coming in in the future is going to dry up. When you had the ability to buy it at a 3% rate for years and years now, and you increased the interest rates, the, the future pipeline of people coming in is starting, <laughs> starting to go away completely. People are there's not an influx of new people looking to get into buying a house. If you weren't already in the process of trying to get out or trying to get in, you aren't rushing to the door now to try and figure something out. You're already too late. So the new pipeline's going away. Right. Right. And that's not reflected in numbers. Like you're not going to see those in numbers. What you're seeing is housing still being sold. People are still buying houses. People are still trying to put their houses up for sale. You're still seeing that because of the existing pipeline. If these, if things don't turn around and numbers start getting better before the new pipeline worth of numbers starts to hit, it's going to get really bad. I got a couple of things to I got a couple of things to add in a couple of things to add in here. So I just noticed that uh, we have an inverse head and shoulders that just completed on Redbox and it broke the neckline here. Um, or it looks like it. Okay, I see. I, I I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. Um, I'm expecting a head and shoulders to complete in this area. So let's see what happens. But I'm expecting Redbox to form this head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders. You got shoulder head, shoulder, and a breakout above $14. So if you see this, um, applause and congratulations. If it breaks down below 1250 again, then we're back down into a channel and it looks like the, uh, it looks like we'd be moving into consolidation. Too early to say if we would be, uh, if we'd be heading back down, but uh, I would at least take profit off of the calls and wait for a sign for it to go one way or the other and pick a direction. Is the neckline at 1385-ish? Yeah, about 1385. Uh, like, I, I'd say more like $14, but yeah, right in that area. There's these high, there's these high liquidity pools here, high density liquidity pools that got pulled out uh, in those areas. So I suspect that there's, I suspect that there might be some early day traders that jumped in on this inverse head and shoulders when it started to form, and they're getting washed out right now. So we'll see if it doesn't bounce here at uh, at twelve fifty. I'd like to see it bounce above uh, twelve fifty. If it breaks down below twelve forty one, then uh, we're going into consolidation. Uh, I wanted to continue the conversation on the housing market, though, and give people some ideas for how they can take advantage of this. So like I was saying, there's uh, there's some short bets that you can take against home builders and construction companies like D.H. Horton and Lennar. Um, I think there's a couple of other ones uh, that are in my list. I'll share some of these. I don't want to share everything. But, God, where is this? Yeah, PHM was one of the picks that I was really looking at. Uh, Pulte Group—they're—they're uh, they're pretty overbought, and they have yet to—they uh, 
they have yet to fully break down. So I see some potential for these guys to get smashed. Um, and what's more, they formed a uh, they formed a head and shoulders on their daily pattern um, uh, on their daily time frame. So they're kind of tracking with the spy, but they haven't quite fully broken down. And this is the first sign of weakness uh, right at their last level of support before they start going into this area where the COVID crash occurred. So some ideas for people that want to uh, that want to take a short against the housing market. If you're looking at something with a bit more leverage, however, and uh, doesn't require you to expose yourself to multiple tickers or just specific tickers, you can go with DRV. This is also a bet that I'm doing. Um, DRV is three times bearish leverage shares against the real estate market, and it's basically um, it's basically an ETF that uses swaps and short positions against REIT companies and uh, and real estate investing uh, organizations and trusts in order to leverage itself against the housing market. So whatever uh, a good way to track this is to look at the XLRE. That's uh, that's the um, the SPY's real estate sector ETF, and uh, whatever XLRE does, this does the opposite. If uh, XLRE is going down, then this will go up approximately three times. So if XLRE were to take a 1% dip, this would rise 3%. And that's exactly what just happened. If you actually compare this to XLRE, then you would see this huge dip that occurred here. It dropped from Let's see, it had a, uh, oof, had a back-to-back 30% drop. So DRV is currently up approximately 30% or 25.5% at the moment. So this is one way that you can leverage yourself up against the housing market. And if you're betting on the housing market to go down like me, and you see this volume coming into this, this is this has consistently been a sign that there's more to come. Um, big volume candles back here were also tipping me off that DRV was going to start running. And it, sure enough, it did. It went from $30 all the way up to a high of 50 70 uh, 50 See, it was fifty-one, fifty-three when it uh, when this candle hit its high point. So we're getting ready to go on another run here. So it would seem to me. Also, inverse head and shoulders. If you were to compare this to the real estate market sector, you would see a head and shoulders on its uh, on its chart. Uh, 